Yo, what's up everyone? Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today, we're going to go ahead and dive into the episode six of our critiquing series. And on this episode, we're just going to go ahead and approach it per usual as we normally do. I'm going to give you all some insight on how I would approach it. Now, I just want to go ahead and reiterate and confirm this is not by any means a right or wrong. I'm not here to tell you to do this or do that. I'm just going to simply give you my artistic approach in what I would do for the designs at hand here. With that being said, let's just dive straight on into this. Okay, so for the first design, the first submission was going to be submitted by a gentleman named Brock Sanchez. I appreciate your submission first and foremost. And as you can see, we have like a skull type cup here. I don't know the actual name of the design or anything like that, but it is obvious that it's a skull. So I'm just going to match the same tone here as the lines. So right off the bat though, overall, it does have a nice and clean read to it. I don't notice anything too apparent that's like a sore thumb. Other than if I zoom in right here, we can kind of see right here. The packing is a bit spotty and right here as well. The line work is just a tad bit inconsistent. So if I go right here and I kind of just clean that up, I may be a bit thicker than what I wanted to go for, but you get my drift. So I think with the lines there, I would have just made them a bit more consistent so that way it has a better read. And in terms of these, uh, the steams right here, I'm not sure if that's what these are. I think they're like uh, steams coming out of the liquid there or something coming out of the liquid. That packing of the black, for me, I'm still learning on how to pack black as well and, you know, still perfecting everything as um, it's a constant practice, but I feel when we take our time packing black I notice I really take my time with it when we really take our time with that it comes out better It makes for a better read upon looking at the tattoo here So if I can go over here and just kind of show you that area so you can kind of see right there with a bit more consistency in the line work it does make for a far better read on the tattoo there overall though it was a great execution it isn't um choppy wobbly or wonky lines everything is pretty solid for the most part but as you see though just with that area being straightened out or um bolded out a little bit making a bit more consistent lines. It does make for a better read on the tattoo. So that's essentially how I would approach it. Everyone's different. So you can kind of see within this line how right here it goes in a little bit and it's like, um, it's not true to form. So for that, I would always go back and just make sure that everything has a nice read as well. Like so, as you see. Just making sure that I'm staying as consistent as I possibly can. Overall though, I do like the design. You can kind of see though, I would just practice a little bit more, kind of just slow it down a little bit more. Find your A to B and make sure you can pull the A to B with one pass if possible. That's what I would do. And as you can see right here with the packing of black as well, I would just recommend when you pack black, take your time, um, start in a section. So when you're packing black, I'm going to make a full in-depth video on how to do that or how I approach that. But for now, when you pack black, find a section that you're going to pack and then simply cover that all. And then once it's the saturation that you like, move on to the next part, as opposed to kind of skipping around. Because when we skip around and rush or and or rush the packing of black process, we end up with spots like that. And me, I never want my tattoos to read like that. So I would just take a little bit more time, slow things down and uh, figure out different techniques that are more comfortable to achieve better saturation here upon packing black and just kind of slow it down upon pulling lines. I hope you can take something from that. Thank you for your submission, Brock. Thank you very, very much. So the next one is going to be submitted by Patty Gilmore. And as you can see, it is a rose. Allow me to match the same tint here. Let me just a little bit smaller. So right off the bat, one thing that I am noticing is that the line work, the line work seems like it's gone over a couple of times and or uh, a bit wonky here. So you can kind of see right here, things get lost. That's what we don't want. We want A to B smooth lines. So let me see if I can clean up what I do see here. Let me see. 
So let's say if I'm A and B in all of these lines, A to B, and then right here, I'm just gonna A, get a B as far as I can. And then the same thing, A to B. And you can see like right here in the line work, we have a bit of inconsistencies here. So I would recommend slowing it down and practicing the line work, slowing it down and um, finding that consistency and staying there, being able to pull one line all the way through nice and clean. You can see right off the bat from the middle parts that I've done, it's making for a far better read on the tattoo overall. And granted, I understand that this is with an iPad, but I hope that the points that I'm trying to make still get across here. So you can see, I'm taking a bit of time to clean up these areas right here. And I can kind of envision if these were nice, clean, one pass, smooth lines. They don't even have to be one pass because some people build up their lines. I think that it'll make for a far better read. I think this is with uh, a round shader as well or a larger round liner. I could be wrong in terms of the round shader. Um, but overall, though, that's what I would recommend working on. I would recommend... Uh, figuring out the line work prior to getting into shading. I remember when I first started, the shading was very, very daunting for me. So therefore it took me a while to actually get to, and now I love shading. I shade every single tattoo. So I would recommend um, holding off on the shading until you get line work down. And then that way, when you move up to the shading area, you can have that line work down at will. When you can pull lines every time at your will, um, there's no, you know, it could be a nice line, it could not be. You want to get past that stage before we get into shading so that way we get a, a much better grip on how to move our machine, how to move our wrist, how to make our own gray wash, etc, etc. But overall, during my time here talking to you, you can see it makes for a far better read right here. And the reason why I say wait on the shading is because um, this right here on the leaves is very, very dark and it's dark almost on the entire leaf, which kind of flattens it out. So with that being said, I would recommend going back to the chop block and practice lining a little bit. You can see right here, there's massive inconsistencies. So get comfortable with the gear that you're using and then find a way to A and B every step of the way. So A to B, I'm gonna go back in, taper in, A to B as much as I can, A to B, and you get my drift. So find a way to go ahead and be more comfortable with your gear so that way it's going to show within the way that your tattoo reads. I feel once you get more comfortable with your gear, take it back to the chop blocks and start practicing lining, slow it down, make sure you're getting nice, clean, one pass saturated lines. And then from there kind of build up into shading. So I would do it in stepping stones as opposed to trying to do everything in one go. Um, just real quick, I remember when I first started, I would try to do everything in one go, like line and shade. And it was very uh, disgusting encouraging to my future in tattooing because I really felt like something was wrong with me when I was just approaching it all wrong. I hope that helps. I hope you can take something from that, Patty Gilmore. Should you have any questions or brought, feel free to drop them in the comments below or anyone for that matter. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for your submission, Patty Gilmore. So the next submission is going to be from Paul Frey. And Paul Frey submitted this flower right here, this floral design. Allow me to match the tone here now for this uh, for these designs floral designs I personally love floral designs some things that do stand out off the bat are the shading and the lining so you can see right here for example this is a part of the line right here I'm not sure if the needle was sticking out too far and or we just kind of wobbled uh, it could be a lot of different things we we're probably uncomfortable however one thing that I am noticing is that the lining is a bit wonky as opposed to nice, clean, and smooth. I'm always talking about that A to B, and when I say that, I'm referring to A and then B. So A is where you start, B is where you end. Always envision that prior to pulling a line because it helps you find a better form within your tattooing. A to B, as you see. A to B. To B.
So you can see I'm doing this little area and it is making for a better read. Now the dot effect, the dot effects, I'm not sure what voltage or needle size you were at. This looks like a little bit bigger needle configuration. So it may be a five round liner or seven or something to that extent. I can't be too, too sure. If you're watching this, drop it in the comments below. But you can see those. So, so both, a lot of these lines are good here. And then some of them go a bit inconsistent. And right here, for example, you see how this area A to B, that B, to, in my opinion, should have been on this line. So we should go on A to B. And for me, all of those little things make for a far better read in the tattoo. So I'm gonna go from here, A to B. And you get my drift with that, kind of just more strong lines there. Tattoo looks more bold, more powerful. And then another thing that I am noticing is like, for example, right here as well. So you can see this line right here again, we have another wobble. I always try to make sure that we're comfortable before we start putting the line in. Make sure you're set right, make sure your positioning's correct to your liking. All of that matters. Make sure you know how you're gonna flow throughout the line. So A to B, I'm gonna pull it this way. You get my drift with that. So that's what I would work on. I would work on kind of just slowing it down a little bit more and finding out a better comfortability upon pulling the lines. And then after you find a good comfortability, find out which way you want to flow with the line, um, how you want to pull the line. Kind of, you know, it can do it in any order that you'd like. And like right here, always make sure that you're A and B and you see how this line overlaps. We have A to B. Very, very nice. And I can kind of just sit here all day and touch it up, but you can see right here from the areas that I have done, how it makes for a better read here within the tattoo. And then those tapering out there, as you see me doing the same thing I would apply to a tattoo machine. You just taper it out and it gives a better read within the tattoo here. As you see. And then right here as well, always make sure that your lines connect. Make sure you're touching base with your lines. So all the way through right here, going all the way to this line, making sure that we are connecting the lines. So overall though, just slow it down a little bit, work on the line work and making sure that you can get a nice, comfortable, clean one pass line. And then go ahead and try to work on the stippling. Drop a comment down below on what voltage you're using and what size needle you're using for this floral design right here. That's what I would say for this one. I genuinely appreciate your submission, Paul Frey. Thank you, thank you very much. Yet again, should you or anyone have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments down below. The next one is going to be from Santiago. Let's check this one out. And as you can see, this one is a skull type of floral design. I do see some leaves there. So it could be a skull floral design. Can't be too, too certain, but it does look nice. I do see the skull there. So that's obviously apparent to me. Now, one thing that does stand out off the bat is the line work. The line work is not bad, but it's not great either. So like what I'm trying to say is allow me to elaborate here. So for example, like the line work, and overall, it, it does read well, don't get me wrong. The line work, it reads well at a distance. It's only when we zoom, zoom in here, we can kind of see different weights in the lines. I'm not sure if we were going for that, but as you can see like right here, how it goes through a different weight as opposed to it being the same one as this line to me. Um, you know, where we started should have been the same line weight as this one. That's one of the only things that stand out, which leads me to believe we're pressing down a bit harder over here versus other areas. As you see, the line weight does change but I feel this sort of tattoo, if the line weight was pretty much all the same, and then we went in with a different line weight to do some details, I think that that would make for a better read, but that is 110% subjective and an opinion. But for me, the consistent line weights is everything. Um, I'm really picky when it comes to picking out needles for my tattoos. So as you can see right here, So what I'm doing is I'm trying to demonstrate the idea of different line weights and what they can actually do for the readability of the tattoo there. Bear with me. 
and line. Let me kind of just do a few more lines here. So like right here on this line, this line is way more bolder than this line going down here. So that's what I mean. The different line weights is one of the things that stands out to my eyes the most. I think that that's due to different consistencies upon pulling the lines. Like some lines were pulled pressing a little harder than others. And that just takes practice to kind of develop a keen sense of consistency. But overall, though, the shading is smooth. I would definitely um, figure out a more comfortable gray wash that I like using and or make uh, find a, a pre-made gray wash that you do like. But for me, though, overall, I do like the design right here. It's a you know fairly cool design. I'm not against it at all. I do like floral designs. I'm not really against skulls either, so which is why, you know, I'm not against the design overall. But as you can see, though, just from the areas that I've done here, it's making for a better read within the tattoo. So I feel if you were to kind of just work on the areas in which you shade it, because where you put the shading, I'm not really a fan of either. So if you work on the areas in which you put your shading in and if you work on the line weights of your lines, making sure that you get more consistency upon pulling the lines, I think your tattoos would be upped a little bit more and the quality in which you're providing would be up more as well. So you can kind of see it and get my drift there. I would definitely just, you know, work on the shading positions, find different shadings, um, different areas, you know, look at uh, different techniques for shadings, find different ways to approach it. And then the lines, I would just definitely recommend to go back and practice a little bit more with uh, consistency. I would just get a practice skin and then just simply a, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Do that five times in five sets. So do a set of five lines like that and then see how consistent they are after you wipe. And then do that five more times. Do that 10 more times in sets of five. So that way you can really compare. And let's say if you're doing this 25 times a day, by the end of the week, you're going to get better and you're going to be more consistent. So that's what I would recommend doing. I genuinely appreciate your submission. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Santiago. I appreciate it very much. And the last one on the list is going to be from Albin here. Uh, Albin Majorzik. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Forgive me for mispronouncing the last name, but this is submitted by a gentleman named Albin. No, this is a different design over what I am typically used to here. Now, as you see, we have real bold lines. So I'm assuming this was done with a larger round liner configuration and or a round shader. I can't be too, too sure. However, what I am noticing here is just a tad bit of inconsistencies here so i do notice that the nose is a lot darker than some of the other areas that are shaded me personally i would have kind of matched that to the darker areas right here that's subjective but one thing that does stand out off the bat is the line work right here so i could see right here in this little spot the tapering was a bit apparent so i'm assuming we kind of came around this way we went like that let me actually make this a bit bigger we came around this way, we came like that, and then right here, we pulled out, and then we went back in. So therefore, we're stuck with that little dot right there, this little area. So for me, that's one thing that does stand out is the tapering in and out. I feel like we could have just done a little bit more work to kind of hide those. I do have a video on tapering in and out as well, how I go about that. And then the inconsistencies with the lines there. So allow me to show you up close. As you can see right here, so this is a little bit lighter. So whenever that, hap that happens to me too. So when that happens, is because I'm letting off a little bit on the needle when I should have been just a little bit more in. So that does take work, you know, in development to be more consistent. Overall though, the tattoo is well executed. It is done nice. It does read well as well. Um, I don't have anything other than that to, you know, demonstrate or uh, relay. I would just definitely recommend on tapering in and out because you can see right here as well. This point right here is a point that's apparent and that gives it away the taper uh, or it gives the taper away rather. So if we go A to B and then we, you know, taper it out and then we do it again, taper in. I think it's going to make for a much better read on the tattoo. Uh, I'm not sure we can spot any more taper in and out. I think this is another one right here as well. So then we went from here. We started. We're doing good. We're doing good. And then we tapered out. 
and then we kept going but it shows it's a parrot so that's pretty much all that really stands out is uh the line work and the tapering in and out there I'm not sure if this was another taper right here. I can't be too, too certain. Some of them are apparent more than others. Uh, like this area right here, it has a definite taper if I am correct. And as you can see, so always try to find an, a comfortable position and then find that A to B to where you can pull as much of the line as possible. But overall though, as you can see, even with me just touching up those little spots, it still reads almost identical to what, you know, to w in which it was sent in, which is great. Overall though, that's what I would genuinely just work on is tapering in and out for you specific here. As you can see, we can see that right here as well. That does add up. So all of the tapering in and out. So if we have one right here, we had another over here. All of those start adding up and they start depleting the quality of the read on the tattoo, I feel personally. So as you see, you know, you just kind of want to take your time, make sure that you get comfortable positions because there's a lot of excess taperings or a lot of excess ink on the outside here of the line from the bad tapering in and out. So just to confirm, I would recommend just practicing your tapers in and out. Um, your line work is getting nice or your line work is nice, you know, but we can always improve. Overall, though, I genuinely appreciate your submission. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Albin. I appreciate the support and everyone else who submitted today. I truly appreciate the support. Thank you all very, very much. I cannot thank you all enough. Now, if I didn't touch base on anything specific or if I didn't go over something specific within this video, or if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. If you're not, I do have social medias all under the same name. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all under the same name as my YouTube channel, Daniel Yuck, D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. I would truly appreciate the support on there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing more videos like this. Thank you all for tuning in yet again. You all have a great day.